Well, let's get more reaction to today's Fed statement. For that, let's bring in Mark Faber. He's the author of the Gloom, Boom, and Doom report. Mark accurately called the 1987 crash, the tech downturn back in 2000. He also called the market bottom in March of 2009. He joins us via Skype from uh, Thailand. And Mark, good to have you back with Matt and me on Street Smart. What do you think? Let's start with the Fed today. Like I was saying, they're kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't. They couldn't win here today. Do you think they did the right thing, though, in kind of giving a time commitment in terms of keeping rates? slow through 2013. Well, I think they did the right thing that they didn't announce QE3. So they can watch the reaction of assets, whether they'll go lower. I think the market is more likely to move still lower. We're very oversold. We can have a rebound like we had today. Maybe we'll have a rebound next week or so. But in general, I think we'll test the July lows of last year, the S&P at 1,010, and after that probably we'll get kind of a QE3 announcement. You think we will get a QE3 ultimately. Um, what are they waiting for? What's the Fed waiting for? The economic data has been, uh, certainly feels like it's been weakening. Those GDP revisions certainly tell us a different story uh, in terms of the first half of the year. What do you think the Fed is waiting for here? Actually, I think the Fed is under estimating the severity of the coming economic downturn and also they've shot out essentially they spent their bullets you know it's very difficult to follow through with qe3 right here because you have gold prices going ballistic and you have the dollar being very weak and so they are unintended consequences with implementing QE3 right here. Mm -hmm. Is there anything, though, Mark, uh, that the Fed could do? I mean, besides nothing, <laughs> what's the possibility? Because this economy, I'm sure from your perspective, is looking weak no matter what. Actually, the best they could do for markets would be to collectively resign. <laughs> to collect it. And you think this that would be good view. for the U.S. equity markets? You, you know, everybody, everybody in the world has become a Keynesian. Everybody thinks the government should do this, the government should do that, the Fed should do this, the Treasury should do that. I think sometimes the best is to do nothing. What? And I welcome the decision, at least today, that they're not doing anything worse than what they've already done. You know, Mark, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I'm watching what's going on in the economy. I mean, does it make sense to provide some kind of stimulus here when you look at the labor market and how pro protracted? Do you think by not doing any additional stimulus that will get through this cycle, it might be, the cuts might be uh, deeper, but that will get through it much more quickly? Well, but I want to ask you, what has QE1 and QE2 done to the labor market? Nothing at all. It's done nothing for the housing market. It's lifted stocks and it created wider wealth inequality in the sense that people that own assets have done very well and people that are the lower income recipient groups, they are hurt by rising energy prices and rising food prices. So, Mark, what has to be done here, I mean, for the U.S. economy? Is it just a process of deleveraging that we have to slog our way painfully through? I mean, look, we had essentially 1981 to 2007 an economy that was living beyond it, its means. In other words, as a result of continuous debt accumulation, GDP was higher than would have otherwise be the case. And now we have a period of subpar growth that can last for quite some time. And like in the case of Japan after 89, people, instead of being essentially encouraged to spend, they should be encouraged to save more and the U.S. should save more and spend less. Mm. And then capital spending will eventually pick up. What do you make of the manic uh, behavior that we're seeing in the markets? Uh, not manic in the treasuries. Those yields just seem to go lower and lower and lower, but manic in the equity trade. Start with treasuries first. Where are we going here? Well, I personally think that uh, 
the Treasury markets, the long-dated Treasuries, are a bubble and that this will be one of the worst investments for the longer term if you buy a 10 years or 30 years US Treasury. So I'm a bit puzzled that Treasuries are now yielding, uh, are essentially near record lows. And I would rather sell Treasuries. The stock market peaked out on the 2nd of May on the S&P at 1370. Mm -hmm. And so we are now around 1,100. So we're down, on, for many stocks, we're down 20% or so. We're very oversold. I think a rebound is coming. But you can forget about a new high for this year. I think that is out of the question because the technical picture is horrible. Horrible. Right. Hey, does it make sense to you, though, Mark, that we continue to see investors move into treasuries? I mean, uh, or is it that there's just no other choice at this point? The cleaner, dirty shirt, as we keep hearing. I mean, does it make any sense to you, uh, the moves that we continue to see in treasuries? Those auctions still seem to hold up at this point, despite the downgrade, uh, despite what's going on globally and what's going on here in the United States? Well, I want to tell you, I've been in this business for 40 years. And on many occasions, nothing made sense to me. Hmm. Like, why did people push up the Nikkei to close to 40,000 in 1989? Why did they push the Nasdaq up to a valuation of like 70, 80 times earnings? Why did they buy homes at record prices with record borrowings and so forth and so on? I think the Treasury market is another example of a gigantic bubble. The problem with the Federal Reserve policies of zero interest rates is that they essentially throw money at the system, but they don't control where the money will flow to. And so it can flow at some point into commodity-related stocks, it can go flow into cotton, into gold, into oil, into treasuries. But it doesn't flow evenly into these assets, and in my opinion, uh, the Treasury, the long-dated Treasuries are essentially the, the short of the century here. Hmm. What, what, what do you think uh, here about gold, Mark? Because we've been talking to you about gold for as long as we've been talking to you, and we're looking at, what, uh, 1759 per ounce. I mean, Is that a bubble? I don't think it's a bubble, but I think that the gold market has exploded on the upside recently and that the correction is overdue. But as I have always maintained for the last 12 years, every responsible adult should gradually accumulate gold because not owning any gold is to trust the government. And I don't understand. People at Bloomberg, I hardly know anyone who owns any gold physically. This is mind-boggling to me. All the Bloomberg employees are intelligent people. They listen to the news every day. They make the news every day, and hardly anyone owns any gold. All so how can you can't, it be a bubble? You can't, you can't use it as, you can't buy anything with it, right? I mean, it symbolizes, <laughs> uh, you know, it symbolizes discord with, with dishonesty, as I think you quoted somebody in your note about, but you can't do anything with it, right? Well, I disagree with you. I can tell you, you give, your girlfriends, copper rings, and I give them gold rings, and I'll keep them longer. That's for sure. <laughs> I'll take the gold rings. Hey, Mark, got Priceless. less than a, a minute left here. Uh, so where um, you like gold, obviously, anywhere else you're seeing opportunity, would you, are you buying stocks on any of the dips that we're seeing at this point, to be, maybe a short play here? Well, I think that right now the technical picture is so horrible that I would use a rebound as a lightening up opportunity. In other words, I would reduce positions depending on how much involved you are in equities. I think they'll move lower, but I think that at some stage you ought to move back into emerging economies because the fundamentals of emerging economies uh, are far better than the fundamentals of European countries and the fundamentals of the United States. So this is something I would consider. The only thing I have to say, basically the market has sold off in such a rapid uh, way and with so much momentum that I'm smelling as if something really wrong happens in the next two, three months. 
people because the market is a discounting mechanism. Frequently, like March 2009, the market started to go up mm -hmm. and people were baffled why it goes up. And now it starts to go down and maybe after three months people will wake up and scratch their heads and say, well now we know why the market started to go down because maybe there is geopolitical problems, maybe the Middle East blows up, maybe Got the it. economy is horrible. Got it. Hey, hey, Mark, always a pleasure to spend time with you. Mark Faber there.